I'm Doc Reitzel. I run that company, Ministry of Velocity. Um, we do consulting here in San Francisco. We help companies like yours um, get better at refactoring, at object-oriented design and functional programming in JavaScript, um, in Ruby, and in Go. Um, we also help teams get better at interviewing and communicating and doing code review, which is kind of changed over the years. The dude in this picture is doing code review in a really classic sense. This is what I used to do in the 90s at my first job. Um, it's like 40 feet of dot matrix printer paper and steel case cubicle dividers and khakis. I, I don't know, I'm kind of dating myself here, but um, what, I'd like to, what I'd like to do is kind of explain what he's doing. He's, he's sitting there and he's like marking with a red pen all the things that are wrong with the code that's in front of him. Um, then he, you know, what he do is bundle it up and pass it off to other programmers so they can go and fix it. Your team might have a more modern workflow. Um, it might incorporate GitHub where somebody makes a, a series of Git commits on a branch and then bundles them into pull requests and then other team members leave comments, code gets cleaned up, and everything gets merged back into master. Um, so obviously we don't need anything else because we can just click the collaborate button on JS Fiddle and we're done, right? Um, so actually, in-person code reviews work a little bit better. They're the next level up. Compared to pull requests, they're faster. You get more direct feedback when you're face to face, and you kind of avoid those moments where you're wondering about sarcasm and its role on the internet. Um, but if you've gone down the road of doing in-person code reviews, uh, you might have experienced weird tension or awkwardness. Kind of this, this gets hand waved off and says, oh, well, you know, engineers aren't good at talking to people. But we know it could be better. That's what we know right now. Um, I've been a consultant for over a decade and a half. Depending on how we're counting, I've done maybe a few thousand code reviews. Each of them is kind of special in its own unique way. When you're junior and pairing with someone more senior, though, code reviews feel like judgment. Uh, even high bandwidth mechanisms like pair programming can't really stave off that feeling. Have you ever felt this way? Here's Abi. He's a, a senior developer at Pivotal Labs. He says, that confused expression on my pair's face when I say th something stupid is a really fortunate part of pairing. I'm glad one of us was listening. He's putting a positive spin on it, but there's some tension here. So in order to understand more about what's going on, I'm going to simulate a code review for you. And these are really contrived. Um, there are two roles I'm going to talk about, the reviewer and the author. And for this example, I'm going to be the reviewer, and that cat's just going to hang out looking fuzzy for a while. So here's a basic backbone view. Um, if you have written a backbone app lately, you might appreciate some, about, uh, some of what's going to happen. Uh, if you haven't, it's just your average JavaScript atrocity. Um, hmm. What's going on here? Okay, all right. You shouldn't be using IDs. Ugh, you know, I hate seeing this. Always use templates and render. Okay, you're, a, you're really junior, and you probably don't know this, but this isn't idiomatic JavaScript. Oh my gosh. Uh, how can we make these functions better? Okay, that was really intense. Even though it was just you and me and some really bad code, something's happened. Let's talk about what the reviewer said first. You shouldn't be using IDs here. Now, of all the days I've been on a client project in the last year, um, maybe a handful of them have gone by where uh, you know, I've, I've heard something like, you know, like this. And you know, it comes up pretty frequently. This is called being right. Uh, instead of talking about the merits of the code on the screen, the reviewer is abusing objective facts or rules or information from outside the current discussion, not, not the code on the screen. So enforcing standards, though, isn't the most efficient use of time. Also, we've got continuous integration. Build failures are annoying, but the upside there is that there's no judgment. In contrast, having someone come over to you and say there's a bug in your code just feels kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, so consider adding these tools. You know, formatting comes up a lot. You know, fork a style guide. You know, make your house style a thing. Yeah, add linters if code just doesn't look right. right? Just kind of merge it in, like flunk the build if you know, somebody's got IDs in there. Add code climate or sonar if complexity or big methods need to be called out frequently. You know, I've got somebody writing a lot of long methods, a lot of if statements, and here you go. Here's, here's a couple of tools you can use. And if testing is important to your team um, and tests aren't being added, you can introduce Blanket.js and kind of give coverage here. The important thing is that settings files don't feel judged. 
Okay, let's look at another thing the reviewer said. Always use templates in render. Uh, words like always and, and never are generalizations. Always use templates in render is really confusing. I mean, what if you have to set the inner HTML and it, and it has to happen in render? So this is pretty tricky. Whenever I hear never do X or always do Y, my brain goes on the defensive. Uh, in the worst of times, I'll think of all the edge cases that I could be you know, moving around. In the worst of times, I'll try to justify my code and say something like, well, this is just an experiment. Uh, as the author, you know, this doesn't build a lot of confidence, not in my abilities and certainly not in the process. So here's a better approach. Just ask the reviewer, can you show me what you mean? This does two things. It lets the author establish rapport with the reviewer, and then the reviewer feels trusted. You know, they have space to explain what they'd like to see in the code. More importantly, the, the conversation moves away from the author and maybe some of the author's personal failings and back toward the code on the screen itself. Okay, so looking at this, we can see automatic semicolon insertion, what seems to be a heart bleed style if statement, and possibly jQuery issues. So the reviewer chose to respond in a very specific way, though. As a junior programmer, you wouldn't understand this isn't idiomatic JavaScript. This is called labeling. So the author will remember being called a junior programmer for the rest of their career. And there's no way to unspeak those words, and the damage done could be permanent. However, the reviewer might be trying to say something valuable and just choosing kind of the worst way to say it. So as the author, what we can say here to steer the conversation away from personal comments and back toward code is simple question. Again, what changes should I make so that this code is more idiomatic? All right, so how can we make this better? This might not seem like a terrible question, you know, now that we've gotten some space. Um, we're looking at it on a screen, it kind of like makes sense. You'd see this in a book. But in the moment when I was going through it, my tone of voice, my presentation, all that kind of stuff, something happened. There was something that was suggested by that. I was talking with a consultant that I work with, and we, we came up with a pretty clear motivation here. It's like school, right? The reviewer wants to guide the author by asking, you know, Socratic question. And this feels familiar. It's the guessing game. So the, the author wrote this code, and the code review process itself implies that there's something bad. In deliberately hiding expectations, the reviewer is creating a gulf, right? So there's you know, code review on one side. The reviewer is creating a gulf that the author needs to bridge. You know, pressure is being put on the author who's in the middle of this. Come up with the right answer, or else. And that's combined with the reviewer's knowledge of the code's inadequacy. In response, the author might just defensively tune out. Instead of being open to feedback during the code review, it's easier to kind of just stare out the window. The hard part here is, frustratingly, detecting when you've tuned out. So regardless of how you do it, if you feel like you've tuned out, the best way to re-engage is to talk about it. I'm confused about what that means. Where should we start? OK, let's step back from the nitty-gritty details for a second. Code review itself is very formal, um, even to the point where people write books and talks about it. Uh, we use forms of code review and in interviewing. We use whiteboarding. It's the, the number one thing that people are used to. Um, we use pair programming interviews, like in you know certain values of you know the, the Silicon Valley normal company. Um, as we found out, getting your code reviewed can be kind of nasty sometimes. So how do you know when you've had enough? How do you know when your brain's about to shut down? You do a gut check. So what, what's, what happens here is your body is going to tell you that you're under a large amount of stress. And your body's also inconsistent, but there are some signs you can notice. The first and most obvious sign is physical discomfort. I usually notice myself fidgeting, and I usually don't do it unless I'm, you know, something's up, like I'm giving a talk in front of a bunch of people. Your body might have its own expression. Silence is another form of physical stress. If you and your coworker are just staring deeply into the code and not looking at each other and not talking, something's up. And what I notice is that, you know, not that I'm in this silent moment, that I'm snapping out of it. I'm waking up out of it. And I'm not really sure how long I've been there. Finally, you can just feel tired. During my first job where I was doing code review on a full-time basis, I fell asleep pretty consistently at 11 a.m. sharp. Um, the constant drumbeat of physical stress kind of wore me down, day after day. 
Okay, so you're feeling one of these signs, great. There's only one way you can handle this, and that's change your current physical situation. Remember to, to break out of this moment. Say, hey, here's what I'm feeling, I need to take a break. For example, while my back is killing me, I need to put my feet up for 15 minutes. I need to go walk around downtown San Francisco and step in some poop of unknown origin. I'll be back in a few. Hey, I'm feeling really tired. I need to go get a $7 cup of coffee. Um, one way is, you know, that some teams handle with stress is by encouraging at work drinking. Drinking won't, won't make stress go away. That's, that's the first thing. But Twitter will get very upset at the consequences. Sometimes you can't disengage from the situation after you come back from a break. <laughs> If the reviewer isn't backing off and you've had enough, it's time to call it a day. And there's something you can say here too. Let's pick this up again tomorrow. After that, you can go home, you can work on something else, but the code review is over. Okay, I'd like to end on a high note. Um, I'm leaving you with a lot of information today. It's 15 minutes. Uh, these things are really difficult to change. All of them take practice. I've given you some tools for recognizing when a reviewer is kind of angling for uh, uh, something that's further off the map than we want to be. Being right, it's an appeal to an external authority. Just use CI, just use automated tools to do this, first and foremost. If you don't have these tools, if the conversations keep coming up and it's mechanically analyzable, don't argue, just drop it in. Generalizing is the use of absolutes, labeling. This is the act of excluding the author from kind of the engineering team in general, playing the guessing game, which is getting that author to exclude themselves by not knowing what to do. There's some signs that you need to take a break. Physical discomfort, silence, exhaustion. These are just the signs that I notice for me. You know your body's language way better than I do. Finally, there's some ground rules during a code review that I feel are really important. Both the author and reviewer should be following these. Talk about the code. I bring it up again and again for a reason. The code's under review, not the people. Use self-directed commentary. Um, that, that means kind of sentences that begin with I feel, I think. Avoid talking about the other person. So sometimes it's, it's not avoidable. Sometimes you, you are asking for an opinion, but using the word you should trigger something like, hey, is this word appropriate here? Am I pointing like criticism unfairly at this other person? All this is really gradual. You start being aware of these behaviors. You might start practicing this stuff at your work, but you probably won't notice changes right away. Because it's just like with meditation or yoga or something gradual like this. When you're better at it, you'll know because it's easier than it was six months ago. Thank you for your time.